Accounting Equation and Excel. Accounts Receivable and Related Subsidiary Ledger. Get ready and some coffee because we're getting down to the accounting foundation. The Accounting Equation with Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or you could just construct your own worksheet as we go or possibly just use good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, the answer key. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel format the blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically working within a template. We'll be adding to that template as needed as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing this time. We are continuing on with our process of adding the beginning balances as though we started our accounting system in a prior accounting worksheet and are now pulling it into our new accounting system. A common scenario for many businesses. This is going to be our beginning balances. Remembering that we typically want to add the beginning balances as of the end of the year, whether that be calendar year and or the fiscal year so we have a whole year's worth of data in one system if we need to be adding multiple data to multiple systems such as starting in march for example first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. I would like to enter all three months, January through March, into the current system, mirroring the prior system for those first couple months so that I have all the information in one system. Now, remember that looking at these beginning balances, we have added the beginning balances which are likely to cause the most problems because those are the ones we need to break out and concentrate on as to why they would cause problems and how we can deal with those problems. Problems typically will be caused by the subsidiary ledgers adding more information that is needed for particular types of accounts, such as this time when we look at the accounts receivable, having a balance of what people owe us, customers that is, 20,500, but also needing who owes us the money because we're going to need to be collecting on that money. Therefore, we need a subsidiary ledger not broken out by date as is the general ledger, but rather broken out by customer. So that means I can't really, again, just enter all of this into the system as one large journal entry because I won't be able to then properly populate the subsidiary ledgers. Therefore, our strategy enter each of these balances one at a time dealing with the subsidiary ledgers as we do that and then putting the other side to some type of equity account possibly a clearing account or owner's equity and then at the end of that process equity will be correct because the double entry accounting system will have done its thing and then we just need to correct the equity balance to whatever it needs to be within the equity section equity being the owner's claim to the assets however the owner's claim could be broken out differently depending on the type of entity. A sole proprietorship only has basically one equity account or possibly a draws account or investment account as well. But a partnership is going to have multiple equity accounts for the multiple partners. So then we can deal with that on its own once we have the proper balance in total equity. A corporation will have equity broken out between the initial investment from the initial offering of stocks and the retained earnings, the accumulation of revenue over time that has not yet been distributed in the form of dividends. Okay, so let's go to the to the blank tab and we're going to deal with the accounts receivable. This is going to be on 1-1 one, one again because that's the beginning of our fiscal year. I'm going to say this is the beginning. Balance, balance, 
for account let's just say accounts receivable receivable okay and then i'll make this a little bit larger so that i have that maybe i'll just instead of doing that i'll try to keep it skinny as i can just call it beginning bow <laughs> and then i can make it a little less big okay so then we're going to say the total now is going to be for this amount the twenty thousand uh the twenty thousand five hundred but i'm going to break it out by customer so we're going to have a sub subsidiary ledger from our prior accounting system listing out who owes us the money so i'm going to list those out here we're going to say anderson guitars owes us five thousand jones guitars owes us seven thousand five hundred and smith guitars owes us eight thousand generic names i know but that those represent the customers that owe us a total that is in accounts receivable of twenty thousand five hundred now when we put these in the books in something like a i can even make this larger with that sub or smaller with the sub ledger when we put these in the books with an accounting software like a quickbooks then typically we're gonna we could put the beginning balances in to each of the customer accounts, but whatever the data input screen is, you can imagine what form is gonna be used. Because remember that software like a QuickBooks or Zero, for example, is driven by data input forms. So it wants to default to a data input form that is linked to particular activities, such as the accounts receivable being linked to the subsidiary ledger. The form that increases accounts receivable is an invoice. So recall that an invoice for us is more specific than the general term of invoice in accounting or everyday language. It means specifically the data input form that we will be putting for goods or and or services that were provided on account, meaning we did work or provided inventory and we're gonna collect on it in the future. That's what an invoice is. So as I enter the beginning balances into an accounting software system, I'm probably not gonna be entering a journal entry form, which is the data input form used if there's no other form to use, but rather possibly enter the beginning balances or possibly use in essence an invoice form, uh, which will record the transaction. All right, so what's gonna be the transaction? For each of these, like an invoice form, it would be increasing the accounts receivable would go up by the 5,000 and the other side, if it was an invoice form, would typically go to the sales line item. Now, I don't want it to go to the sales line item in our practice problem, I want it to go to our equity account. But realize that if you're in software and it does go to a sales item, then you have a couple options. You could do a journal entry, taking it out of sales and putting it into an equity item, or you can put all of these beginning balances in the system as of the day before the new year. So instead of entering it as of January 1st, as we are doing here, you might enter it as of December 31st of the prior year so that even if it hits an, ec an income statement account, it won't be a problem because the income statement accounts will roll into the, the closing account, which for us is owner's equity for a corporation would be retained earnings, right? So, but ideally I'd like it to go directly to the equity account in this particular case. So I'm gonna do that here, have it increase the equity. That's on the wrong line though, wrong line. And we'll do that for all of these, right? So now the next one is gonna be 7,500. 7, I'm recording separate journal entries. I could record one journal entry and then adjust it in the sub ledger. But I think in this case, I would like to mirror what's likely to happen in accounting software, putting each of these on the books with a separate transaction, most likely done in software with an invoice type of form. So we're gonna say all three of these are gonna go in here, but boom, boom. Okay, so there are those. And then we're also gonna have uh, the sub ledger that is going to be impacted. In software, it would be done automatically when you enter the beginning balances for customers or an invoice because that will tie directly to the subledger. For us, I'm gonna make our own uh, subledger here. So I'm gonna say, this is gonna be equal, I just wanna make sure I get the line item right, equal to the, to the 
to the 5,000. Now my sub ledger, I'm gonna make it a little bit different format because I think this is the cleanest uh, way to do it in the software. I'm kind of experimenting with this because with the inventory, notice we had to have this large clunky inventory thing. And that's the problem with inventory because we have to convert from units to dollar amounts. But for uh, here, we might be able to make a, a more streamlined sub ledger than even you'd see in the software, possibly by having vertical columns for each customer. So I'm gonna say this one is gonna be Anderson Guitars. And then I'm gonna make a new column for each customer. So I'm gonna put my cursor on column AI. And let's go to A, let's just go to the next one over because I'm gonna add two new columns and it'll copy the formatting of the column on the right. So I'm gonna right click and insert two new columns. And this is gonna be Jones, the Jones Guitars, the Jones Guitar Boys, and then the Smith Guitars. So these are just customer names we are imagining. And then instead of putting the 5,000 underneath, I'm going to say Jones, that's going to be the 7,005. And then Smith is going to be equal to the 8,000. And then I'm going to have my running balance total in this column, which is simply going to be equal to the, the let's say equal to the one above it. Nothing's in there yet, of course, plus the sum of the current activity this 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 i need to close that up that's my running balance formula enter and then when i copy this down i just go boom 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 and it does a running balance adding the one above it to this line and this line there's our running balance so we're currently at twenty thousand five hundred. that makes sense that ties out to what uh we have over here twenty thousand five hundred and we have it broken out now by customer Anderson Jones Smith. Now, when they pay us, I could just put a negative underneath it and the column will show us the amount due from a particular customer ins and outs in the column. And the total will then give us the total, which should always tie out to what's in our general ledger. In this case, our accounting equation kind of trial balance that we are uh, putting together in software like a QuickBooks, for example, some software will force us to be in balance with these subsidiary ledgers, which is a blessing. It's good, but also can cause problems uh, because, for example, adjusting entries or something like that. Sometimes we would want to record something to accounts receivable without the subsidiary ledger, and you can't really do that. So, so other software, however, doesn't have that functionality forcing us to have a subsidiary ledger that will be same as the general ledger by forcing us to add a customer every time we do a transaction. Note that the inventory, by the way, doesn't typically have that feature in most accounting software because not everybody uses the same inventory strategy and therefore you can't just do the same thing for inventory. So therefore, even if you're using a perpetual inventory system for inventory in accounting software, it's quite possible that things get out of whack between the sub ledger having a different total balance than is on the general ledger because there's no, there's no forcing mechanism within the software to reconcile those. With regards to accounts receivable and accounts payable, however, many softwares do have that feature forcing these things to be in balance, but we need to see how they tie together so that we don't get frustrated when we do data input and the system says, hey, you can't do that or something like that because the system is trying to help us by not messing up the sub ledger. All right, let's finalize this thing. I'm gonna go back on over. Let's put some zeros across the board. Zero, 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 do, do. Copying the zeros across the board. And then I'll just copy them down here as well. We'll copy them down to do it. So we copy them down. I'm not gonna put a balance between each transaction. I'm just gonna record all of these at the same time. And then we'll sum it up. Little darling, sum it up. And then, okay, copy it down, copy that, roger that. Let's put an underline under the bottom underline we're going to put the line underneath the last column and because the line is underneath 
We call that an underline, appropriately enough, in case you were wondering, in case you weren't aware of that uh, little factoid. Uh, let's call this, this is going to be the balance. And we will then sum it up. So I'm going to sum up the whole thing now equals the sum. The whole thing because this was the prior balance, the first balance, so we didn't need a balance in between it. And then these are three kind of transactions that we're recording basically at the same time. So this is where we're at at this point in time. I'm going to copy that and then paste that across, pasting it formulas only so it does the formula but doesn't mess up the color coding. So let's do that all the way across, all the way across, making it look nice and neat. Nice and neat. Can it be nice and ugly? Can something be nice and I don't, probably. But, but usually nice stuff is neat. If it's ugly, it's more likely not to be nice. That's what I feel like. Ugly stuff can be nice, but neat stuff is more likely to be nice than ugly stuff. Nice and neat, not ugly and neat. Okay, if it's not neat, okay, you get what I'm saying. I'm gonna, let's make this a little bit larger. All right, so now we're in balance. So now we've got 23,396 on the books in assets. Notice we haven't put cash on the books yet. Uh, and then the other side is in equity. So that means if this was really all we had in the books as of now, then, then notice what would happen if I liquidated the company. It's just useful to think about this from time to time because it gives us an idea of how the double entry accounting system works and the value of the company. Because remember, I can, I can take this accounting equation, twist it to being assets minus liabilities, just with algebra, means that this would be the book value of the company, which would mean if I liquidated, I stopped doing business or was to sell the company, you would think I would get 23,396. But that's not exactly the case because remember, we don't have that in cash. If you're in business, you're not holding on to strictly cash. You're investing it somewhere in some way, some shape and form. In this case, 20,500 from inventory. I mean, accounts receivable, 2,896 inventory. Now, if I went out of business, I might be going out of business because the people that owe us money aren't paying us, right? So I might not be able to collect on that. That would be a problem. I wouldn't be able to have the same value in equity if that was the case. I would have to collect on the receivable and I would have to sell the inventory for at least the cost of the inventory and then pay off any liabilities of which I don't have any. And therefore, I would I, that's where I would have the 23396 in the equity if I was to liquidate the company. So then, so if I was to do the journal entry, right, we would say, okay, I'd have to get cash for inventory and then I would lower inventory and get the cash. And then I would have to get cash for the accounts receivable, lower the accounts receivable and get the cash. Then I would have the full 23,396 in cash matching the 23,396 in equity. And then I would have to pay myself from the business account to my account or to my personal account lowering the cash, lowering the equity, then we would be liquidated, right? Okay, that's the idea. 